welcome back to my channel please like subscribe and comment down below your thoughts and random stuff so today i decided to make videos about criminals who was diagnosed with a certain mental illnesses I think this would be fun so let's start with the very interesting case of an infamous criminal who was diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia. So, a little background with paranoid schizophrenia. It is characterized by predominantly positive symptoms of schizophrenia, including delusions and hallucinations. These debilitating symptoms blur the line between what is real and what isn't, making it difficult for the person to lead a typical life. The positive symptoms of schizophrenia are things like hallucinations and delusions are less likely to go unnoticed. After the prodomal phase, the patient enters the active phase of schizophrenia, in which they experience weakening thoughts and perceptual distortions. They may experience reduced motor or cognitive functions, including disorganized speech and disorganized or catatonic behavior. The paranoia in paranoid schizophrenia originated from delusions or firmly held beliefs that persist despite evidence to the norms and hallucinations or seeing or hearing things that others should not see or hear. Both of these experiences can be annoying or threatening in nature. A patient may hear a voice or voices in their head that they do not recognize as their own thoughts or internal voice. This voice can be demeaning or life-threatening which can cause a person to do things they would not do otherwise. Now that we have basic knowledge about paranoid schizophrenia, Let's jump into our story about the infamous son of Sam. Richard David Falco was a child of a poor Jewish mother and was born on June 1, 1953 in Brooklyn, New York. He was adopted by Jewish American hardware story tailors Nathan and Pearl Berkowitz when he was just a baby. He was known to be a smart child but was troubled in his own way. David has always been close to his mother, so when she died, he had a very difficult time as a coping teenager. When he was 18, he was enlisted in the U.S. Army and served in South Korea where he was known to be excellent as a marksman. He returned to New York after finishing military service in 1974 where he landed on a job and became as a letter sorter for the U.S. Postal Service. He eventually had an apartment. His neighbors and co-workers would often describe him as a loner who kept to himself. Two years later, on July 29, 1976, Berkowitz began his killing rampage in the Bronx, starting with two teenage girls, Jody Valenti and Donna Loria. The two girls were just sitting in Valenti's car in front of Loria's home when David shot at them, leaving Loria as dead and injuring Valenti. A few months later, Berkowitz continued his killing spree when he spotted a couple in another parked car. He fired at them, which left an immense injury to the man's skull. That same month of November, he also shot two teenage girls who were walking home together and left one paraplegic or paralyzed on the leg and lower body. At that time, the police had no idea that the shooting incidents were related and done by the same person. A major event happened in January 1977 when Berkowitz attacked another couple in a parked car. He approached Christine Freund and her fiancé who was shot twice, striking Freund's head which later proved to be fatal. Since Berkowitz used the same .44 caliber gun in all of his shootings, it made it easier for the police to connect the dots and was already on his trail. David was originally referred by the police as the .44 caliber killer which later evolved to the son of Sam. Two months later, on March, he murdered a college student named Virginia Voskrikian who was walking home from class. The next month, 
Berkowitz targeted another couple in their car, but this time, he left a letter nearby addressed to NYPD Captain Joseph Borelli, referring to himself as the son of Sam for the first time. Throughout his heinous crimes, he left numerous letters near his victims' bodies, provoking the police and escaping their capture. Because of this, the media was all over this case. The media coverage of his crimes was widespread and he enjoyed the spotlight. The incident that paved way for David's incarceration happened in the early hours of July 31, 1977 in Brooklyn. He shot Stacy Moskowitz and Bobby Violante. Moskowitz later died and Violante was blinded in one eye and lost most of his vision. Luckily for the police, a witness noticed something at the scene that helped them solve the case. At the scene of Moskowitz's Violante shootings, a witness saw a man getting away in a car that had a parking ticket on it. Only a few tickets were given out that day and one of them was for Berkowitz. This evidence led on his arrest which happened on August 10, 1977. During questioning, Berkowitz explained that he had been commanded to kill by his neighbor Sam Carr, who sent messages to him through his dog, which was a demon-possessed Labrador Retriever named Harvey. Due to his outrageous claims, he underwent several psychological evaluations but was declared competent to stand trial. In 1978, Berkowitz pled guilty to the six killings as well as nearly 1,500 fires he had set in and around New York City. He received 25 years to life for each murder. His sentencing was pretty dramatic as he tried to jump out of a window of the 7th floor courtroom upon hearing the judge's decision. Since his arrest, Berkowitz has withdrawn his possessed dog, Son of Sam, story claiming it was all a hoax, a silly hoax. He also said that he was a member of a violent cult that helped him carry out the murders and that fellow members, John and Michael Carr, which are Sam Carr's sons, assisted him. Berkowitz has acquired substantial sums of money because he shared his story which garnered a lot of attention. However, nearly all states including New York, have since passed laws, sometimes known as Son of Sam laws, that prevented convicted criminals from financially profiting from books, movies, or other enterprises related to their crimes. Although he has been put up for parole on numerous occasions, most recently in 2016, he has been consistently denied release. Berkowitz is currently serving his time in Sean Gum, Correctional Facility in Wallkill, New York. While in prison, Berkowitz has become an evangelical Christian. Instead of Son of Sam, he now prefers Son of Hope, as seen in his book and on the site wherein he provides an apology to his victims and their families. In prison, Berkowitz continues to write journal essays on faith and repentance as well as contribute to school-based projects for students in psychology, criminology, and sociology who want to learn more about the criminal mind and criminal justice system. In February 2018, the New York Post reported that Berkowitz had a heart attack prior to his first surgery in December. In late January 2018, he had to undergo further treatment and return to the hospital after experiencing complications. As of today, Berkowitz is 66 years old and is still alive and serving six consecutive life sentences. So that's it for today. Let me know in the comments what you think about this case. Thanks for watching!